Hey guys, it's the Plant Doctor. What I want to talk about today is how we can be successful with Japanese maples in heat. It's possible. I'm going to give you nine steps to do it. So let's go take a look. The first thing we got to do is select the right cultivar for a climate that can take a lot of heat. And, and there's several. So if you wanted a, we'll start with red leafed Japanese maples, a good selection. There's, there's two off the top of my head that are really, really good. And that's the blood good Japanese maple, perhaps the most popular Japanese maple out there. And then also Emperor One, which is very similar in terms of its uh, color and growth habit and, and texture. I have an Emperor One in my yard. Um, and it's in blazing sun and it does a fantastic job for me. It's about a four year old tree that I grafted myself. If you're interested in learning how to graft a Japanese maple, I did a video on that and I'll leave the link up here if you wanna check that out. If you're more interested in a green leafed Japanese maple, uh, perhaps Sangu Kaku or the coral bark Japanese maple would be a good selection for you. The interesting thing about the coral bark Japanese maple is especially in cold weather so the cooler it gets for me the more vibrant pink that bark gets right now it's more of a reddish color but as we progress through fall and then winter and i get some mornings here uh, we don't get too cold here you know, 25 degrees is really cold and we rarely maybe one or two days a year get down in the teens and uh, that bark just it'll glow in the dark it's, it's a great great japanese maple uh, for all seasons it takes full sun it takes heat it has good fall color uh, all the things that we're looking for with this particular video in in how to grow a japanese maple in heat that's a good cultivar to have and then perhaps uh, a red lace leaf one would be tamu kiyama so i've got a couple of tamu kiyamas in the yard they're in full sun and they're doing fantastic for me. So those are some cultivars that if you are interested in growing in full sun, check those out. They'll probably do good for you. Now let's talk about where we want to plant Japanese maples. So I mentioned a few that can take full sun, but really Japanese maples will do best if you can give them some afternoon shade. So that really starts to open up the plant palette in terms of what Japanese maples we can use in, in, the, in the landscape setting. So now we're not just dealing with blood good and Emperor One. We can start to get into things like orangeolas and waterfall and just a whole other list of Japanese maples where if we give them some morning sun and then around lunchtime, they start to get some filtered shade and then the, the heat of the afternoon, they're in shade we can really start to grow a lot of different cultivars of Japanese maples. So look at your cultivar selection and then plant them where they're gonna get some afternoon shade and you'll be doing pretty good. One thing we need to discuss is fertilizers. If you're pushing a lot of new growth on a Japanese maple that is in full sun, that's not really a good thing to do. You're gonna stretch, you're gonna be pushing a lot of new vegetative growth on that tree, which takes a lot of water. You're stretching the cambium layer. So cambium is the xylem and phloem in the tree that's moving water up and down in the, in the trunk and the limbs and the leaves. And that's not a good thing. So what we need to be focused on is a slow release fertilizer. Don't be putting a lot of fertilizer on your Japanese maples, especially like liquid feed. Use a slow release prill, put it out early April or May or March or whenever uh, your Japanese maples in your area start to break bud. That's the time to give them some, uh, some feed and then just leave them alone. If we're constantly pushing fertilizer on our Japanese maples, uh, we're gonna set ourselves up for failure, especially in high heat environments. The next thing we need to talk about is too much water. So with Japanese maples, how we want to water is we want to saturate the ground or the pot, the container it's in, and then let it dry out and then repeat that process again. Uh, so if it's raining here, I don't even water my Japanese maples in the landscape. If I'm getting rain like once a week, 
I'm just gonna let them go. Uh, if I go seven to 10 days without rain, I'll, I'll water them. I will saturate my Japanese maples and then let them dry out. If they're constantly saturated, if they're constantly in wet ground, what's gonna happen is you're gonna get root rot and your Japanese maple will die. On the other end of that spectrum, we don't want our Japanese maples to dry out. So once the soil is dried out, saturate the soil. If, if you're planting in a container, uh, one thing I would recommend is use what I call the index finger check. So take your index finger, stick it down into the soil layer, and if the tip of your finger is wet, your Japanese maple is okay. If the tip of your finger is dry, you need to water And Here again, saturate it, let it dry out, uh, and you're gonna be good to go. So when we talk about watering, something else that we need to discuss is water pressure. Water, if you're watering with a hose, make sure that it, it, the water's kind of arcing to where you want it to hit. Don't use a lot of water pressure. Don't put your thumb down and just jet stream that water down. Uh, because here again, Japanese maples are going to have a very thin bark and you could literally pressure wash the bark off of your Japanese maple. Also, if you're hitting the root zone with a lot of pressure, uh, you could loosen the soil around the roots of your Japanese maples and then they, that erodes out and you've lost that soil that was holding in and around the roots of your Japanese maple. So don't water with a lot of pressure. Uh, use more of an arc. In terms of where to water, if you can, just water the root zone. Don't water the foliage of the tree, especially if you need to water in the afternoons. Typically, we want to water in the mornings, but I know we all have jobs and, and kids and just a million other things going on, right? And sometimes we just have to water when we can. So I would encourage you, if you can, water just the root zone, especially in the afternoon. If you're watering those leaves in the afternoon, you could get sun scald on those leaves. And so if you have a Japanese maple that you've watered and you got the foliage wet and you come back out a week or two later and you see these little brown dots all over the leaf, it's probably sun scald from where you watered in the afternoon. And that can be avoided. Uh, also uh, leaf pathogens, so things like uh, powdery mildew, things of this nature uh, they can spread by watering over the top over the top of the foliage so the spores will splatter from one leaf to the other and that's how that that can spread so if you just water on the ground avoid the foliage you'll be doing a whole lot better fit another thing to consider are understory plants under your japanese maple uh, something that's kind of shallow rooted can take a little bit of shade because eventually your your japanese maples will fill out and provide a little bit of shade uh, something like mondo grass, a juga maybe, uh, those would be great. Here again, we're looking for something that's going to kind of cover the surface of the ground, retain some water that would otherwise get evaporated. Uh, if it's more of a shadier area and you have some, um, some more mature Japanese maples, I wouldn't do this on immature Japanese maples, maybe hosta would work as well. Uh, on an immature Japanese maple, the root zones on hostas can get deep. And so you may have some competition for water between hosta and immature Japanese maples. But if your Japanese maple was, is mature, uh, hostas may be a good option for you too. Uh, so consider understory plants with your Japanese maples when you plant them. Perhaps the worst thing we can do for Japanese maples in terms of dealing with the heat is planted them on brick or on the southwest side of a house. If you can avoid brick, in particular south facing brick, north facing brick would probably be okay, but east, south, and west brick where the sun is exposed on your house, you're gonna cook your Japanese maple. Get it out away from the house 10 or 15 feet uh, and you're gonna be doing a whole lot better. Or if you wanna put it right up against the house, uh, like a a Crimson Queen or Tamu Kiyama, one of those uh, dwarf weeping spreader type Japanese maples, put it on the north side of the house. Uh, so you're just, that, that residual heat that builds up in brick is just not absolutely cooking the foliage. A pro tip about watering your Japanese maples 
in a container. I already mentioned sticking your finger down in the soil layer, but one thing I want you to do, especially if it's in full sun, is water the sides of the pot. I know that sounds crazy, but hear me out on this, okay? When you water the sides of the pot, you're actually cooling that down. So I've got a, you can see right here behind me, I've got a, this is a lime tree uh, in a pot. And I water the side of that pot when I water. Reason being is I don't want the roots to burn up. So if roots are in the ground, they don't get really hot. They're going to stay 70, 80 degrees. The roots in a pot can get very, very hot. So if we water the sides of the pot, we're cooling down that pot. We're, we're, we're pulling some of that heat out of that pot and is going to help that plant survive better. Also, give them some afternoon shade. Even if it's like a blood good or emperor one, one of those cultivars that we have already discussed that does very well in full sun. If it's in a pot, give it some afternoon shade and it's going to do a whole lot better for you. One thing that will help your Japanese maples out tremendously in high heat environments is mulch. So when you mulch Japanese maple, I want you to use some sort of organic material. I prefer pine straw, it works great for me. Or you can use uh, like a pine bark nugget, and pine bark nuggets are great. One thing I would suggest on the pine bark nuggets is if you live on a slope or your Japanese maples are planted on a slope, don't use pine bark because pine bark can float. And if you get a heavy rain, your, your pine bark's gonna go down your slope, okay? Pine straw will kind of interlace together and you're not gonna have that issue of having to scoop up stuff and take it back up the hill. Uh, so what, what's mulch doing for us? It's keeping the ground cooler, one, it's helping to hold some of that moisture into the ground as well. So it's doing a couple different things for us there. It's keeping our roots cool. It's, it's retaining moisture in the soil layer that we would otherwise be losing to evaporation. One form of mulch that I would not recommend, especially with Japanese maple, is rocks like river rocks. They radiate a ton of heat and that heat will cook the cambium layer of your Japanese maple. Japanese maples tend to have pretty shallow bark or very thin bark. And so that heat's getting to that cambium layer. You're, you're heating up the vascular system of your Japanese maple and it's gonna be susceptible to all sorts of disease and, and dying out. Uh, so avoid rocks if possible. Use some sort of organic material. Here in my area, it's mainly pine straw. Uh, other parts of the country are international. Uh, you may have some other form of mulch, but uh, just stay away from anything that retains and reflects a lot of heat. Guys, as always, thank you for watching The Plant Doctor. Um, as of the making of this video, we're well over 3,000 subs, and I can't thank you enough. Uh, you've hit that like button. You've hit the sub button. You've shared my videos with your friends and your garden, gardening buddies, and, and so thank you. I really appreciate it, and until next time, happy gardening.